In today's video, we're going over the top five things that every seller needs when beginning an online store. Every time where I go and make a video like this, where I sit down and I talk directly to you guys, to a camera, I'm always trying to think about what are the things that I was missing out on when I was starting my store? What would I find the absolute most value in if I was a beginner seller just starting out? Uh, what videos would I benefit from the most? And that's the advice I'm trying to pass along in these videos. So I'm hoping that today's video will be no exception. It will have some very valuable information for you guys. And uh, we're just gonna get right into things. Actually, before we do though, really quickly, if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and also leave a like on the video if you enjoy it. With that, let's get right into things. So the first item that every new online seller is going to need is going to be inventory. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just going to assume that you already have inventory and that you kind of assumed that that was going to be necessary to start selling. But what isn't so obvious in that is an inventory tracker. And that's what we're going to break down right here. An inventory tracker or an inventory system, unlike a direct accounting system, is something used to actually trace your inventory, what you paid for it, how much you're going to make on the sale and things of that nature. An important thing here, especially when you're starting out, is to look and do exactly what you're selling and how much money you're going to make on it. And first of all, be able to do the math accordingly to make sure that you're actually going to make enough to cover all your bills and your expenses, but also to make sure uh, that your business is going to be profitable and earning the amount that you think it will. And an inventory tracker is a great way to do that. Also, an inventory tracker can be used to see what you have available for sale, maybe be able to make decisions on what you're going to need to buy in order to sustain your business for the next month. It'll also give you an in-depth detail of what you pay for each item or maybe what you need to set your sell price at to meet a certain margin goal. All of these things are super valuable and you can do this for basically free. Uh, one option that you could do is just create an Excel or a Google Sheets file and simply track everything that way without going in too much detail. I think that less is more in the case of an inventory tracker as you don't want to waste time dealing with that, but it definitely is important, especially when you're starting. Another option, if you're getting a bit more advanced, maybe have a lot of items that you're dealing with or you're trying to turn this into more of a business would be to explore a software like QuickBooks or Wave, which is the one that I've recently started using, not affiliated with any of them, but just saying might be worth looking into or at least sign up your own bookkeeping method, which also tracks inventory through a software of that nature that does it more automatically. Either way, inventory is one of the most important things to deal with as an online seller and one of the things that I would recommend, you know, spending some time and money maybe even learning about so you can actually make sure that you're profitable and that you're making sure that you know where everything is. Second thing that I'm gonna have to recommend is a printer of some kind. I was one of the ones that started out as a new seller and hand wrote all my you know shipping labels out. And although that works, it definitely is by no means time efficient and also can make for your packages have the wrong addresses on them, have things sent back. It's just not worth dealing with. So definitely, I wouldn't say for your first few sales, but if you're serious about getting into reselling or selling things online, I would highly recommend looking at some sort of printer. This one I have right here is a Dymo label printer. I haven't actually used this one yet, so I can't say too much about it, but I've only heard good things about it. So I would recommend one, but also you could get a full blown printer that can print your labels out that way. And you can even get label sheets that allow you to print onto them. I've got one in the other room. That's what I use for everything. It's an HP. Um, uh, printer of some sorts, uh, but you know, something that you can get on sale but is reliable. You want a good one, but these are definitely no exception either. These are really good printers as well, but just something that you can use to print out all your shipping labels on gonna be a big time save and also gonna help with avoiding any sort of errors in the shipping process. That's a nice and simple one there. There's also a lot of other shipping things that you need to know. Maybe a scale, for example. That's definitely important if you're packaging anything from home. Now, I should also say a tape measure, but I'm gonna assume that most of you guys have that, but to be able to measure and weigh your packages before or you list them on eBay and also every time that they sell, when you go to purchase your labels, this is gonna save your life. You don't wanna be going and lining up a can of post and paying for each individual package there. That might be okay if you're just starting out and you only have a few parcels, but the second that you have any amount of volume moving through a store, you're gonna want your own scale, you're gonna want your own you know, rulers or whatever kind of special measuring devices you need to be able to purchase the appropriate labels online and not end up waiting and wasting a bunch of time in line at Canada Post, FedEx, wherever it might be where you're sending out your parcels. This one's from Canadian Tire, cost me I think 15 or $20. There are bigger ones, there's some really great ones that you can get that have the external displays so you can put really large boxes on them. It all comes down to what you're selling and what your preference is. There's also, you know, you can get the big fruit scales if you wanna read, you know, a more analog analog uh, system, but any sort of scale is going to work and you can get them relatively cheap. So I'd recommend looking into uh, some sort of type of scale and a measuring device so you're able to obviously weigh out and charge for your own labels. Next up is going to be packaging material and here's the good news about this stuff. For the most part you can actually get this stuff for free. So this is more of a disclaimer that when you're getting packaging material into your house as a new seller, you should be saving all of it. The boxes, the envelopes, the bubble wrap, the paper padding, all of this stuff is going to be super helpful when you 
go to package your own sales. So saving that to start off is good, but as you advance up, you're gonna realize that you're gonna run out of it and you're gonna need more of it. So there are a few options in terms of if you're actually trying to buy some, you can go to a website like Uline or some of the other shipping uh, suppliers and you can buy a big roll from them. This one here is from Staples. It wasn't cheap, but it's doing the trick and it's still lasting me. I'm probably about, I don't know, four months into this one now. Uh, maybe not that long, but still, I've had it for a little while now and it's been doing the trick, uh, but for the most part, I'm reusing Bubble Mailer too, which is great. So the combination of the two keeps me afloat. For paper, I'm always going to Lowe's or Home Depot or Canadian Tire, buying a whole roll of it, you get an infinite amount and it all matches, but you know, it's not to say that when you're starting out, you don't save the paper that you're getting in. For example, here, this one's from a box that I just received and I'm gonna be able to reuse this in another package. Anyway, you wanna make sure that you are building up a large supply of all the different shipping materials that you may or may not need because you will find that one day you're gonna run into an item where something will be useful. Even sometimes the styrofoam inserts and cutouts, you can modify them to, you know, pack electronics and it really comes down to what you're selling, but ultimately saving all of it probably won't hurt and if you have a dedicated area where you can put it all, then you can know exactly where to find it and you can use the right stuff every time to ensure that your items get to your buyers intact. The fifth suggestion that I have for any new seller and something that I think is really important when you're starting out a store is to have a dedicated area or perhaps a shelf where you keep all of your inventory. This is really important for a few reasons. One, you don't want your inventory all mixed in with your personal stuff. That could lead to potentially you losing a piece of inventory and then when it sells, you not being able to find it. Also, inventory can be quite invasive, especially if you're doing it in your own home or personal space, uh, which means it can basically, you know, take over your personal life and all of your extra space. Um, so one really important thing that I think right off the bat, instead of just throwing it everywhere where you have space, is to find some sort of dedicated space or go out to Canadian Tire or wherever, buy one of these, you know, $30 shelves and dedicate dedicate it to inventory. When I started out selling video games, I had a dedicated bookshelf uh, just in one of the rooms uh, where I had all of the video games stored. And that's how I started out. But at least I knew that every single thing that I had listed was going to be on that shelf. And there was never a case where I had lost an item or was running around trying to find something for a couple hours before I had to ship it out. But it also was just good for my well-being or my mental health because obviously, you know, when things start to take over and clutter, it just is not good for your environment and for your working habits. So I think having that in its own separate area where you can still find it efficiently is obviously a good idea. And as you expand, you can start to add bins to those shelves, you can start to add drawers and labels and fill up a whole new inventory system. It's all a bunch of fun but you gotta get there and start somewhere. I would just wouldn't start, you know, all over your bedroom. I would start at least, if you don't wanna buy a shelf, in, you know, maybe if you just have a little bit of stuff, one, you know, cupboard drawer or one, you know, area of your closet, just somewhere where it's gonna be out of space or out of sight, out of mind, and just won't be too much of a distraction and also will be easy to locate when it sells. So that's it for all the things that I would recommend that you buy, but now I wanna just briefly touch on a couple things that I don't think you should buy as a bonus thing here, because I think this is really important. And these couple things kinda go together, but it's something that I've sort of advocated for for all beginner sellers because I think you know it's just not worth the money up front and people worry about it too much it delays their listings it's just overall not a very good thing to think about and that's the photo setups that you're using to take pictures of your items when you're just starting out it's completely acceptable to take pictures of your items on you know your kitchen dining room table or on your floor or wherever it might be that you have an open area with a little bit of light. You don't have to go out and purchase a really expensive camera. Most of the time the iPhones and whatever smartphone you have, the equivalent is going to be fine for the photos. Everybody's gonna be able to see it. And oftentimes the exterior light coming through a window or whatever will provide enough light to light whatever the item is or shot that you're trying to get. Now you could go out to the dollar store and maybe buy a couple pieces of the big white, you know, paper and that would do just fine. But I'm just saying maybe avoid buying, you know, multiple studio lights and getting like a whole, uh, you know, white drop down uh, sheet set up where you have this entire proper inventory set up and then you're spending all the time editing the backgrounds of your photos. Just skip all that stuff. Go right into your iPhone, take out an item, put it on the floor, take a picture of it, list it on eBay. There's no need to get fancy. Obviously, as you you know grow your store, it actually becomes more efficient to have a proper setup and it will just look nicer, so I would recommend looking into it. But when you're just starting out, do not spend the extra money. You should be putting every extra dime into inventory and growing your store versus uh, you know trying to invest in things that are gonna make things look better but you still you know, don't even have enough things to justify that. So I'm just saying to avoid some of those higher end or higher uh, you know, ticket uh, camera accessories and things of that nature and maybe just stick uh, with you know, a picture on your iPhone on your floor. I'll tell you it works. I bought things with people who just take a picture of things anywhere and I don't think that when you're starting out it's super critical. So I'm hoping you guys were able to find some value from that video. Again, those are some of the things that I really wish that somebody had told me when I was starting out and hopefully for some of you guys that are starting out or maybe even slightly more experienced, uh, you guys can learn something from this video. So I really hope so and if you did, make sure to leave the video a like and maybe comment down below of any additional suggestions that you may have. 
in addition to what I mentioned here or any of the ones that I said that you may have agreed with or disagreed with, let me know down below. And with that, I'm going to end today's video here. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you.